All right, thank you all and welcome. Uh, first, I'll say welcome to the Comptroller's Volunteer Conference Center. First time we have had a meeting of the State Funding Board here, but in keeping with the, uh, the new statute uh, that calls for video broadcasting and archiving and participation, uh, all meetings staffed by the Comptroller's Office will be occurring in this room. So we're glad to have you here. Today, uh, first meeting on our agenda is the Tennessee State Funding Board for July 26, 2022. Uh, we'll note the presence of a physical quorum in the room. Uh, our first item of business on the agenda today is consideration and approval of the minutes of the June 15th meeting. Members, I hope you've had time to see those in your packet and review them uh, and uh, would appreciate a motion to approve. So the I have a motion and properly seconded to approve the minutes of the June 15th meeting. Um, all those in favor or any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the minutes, please respond by saying aye, aye. Any opposed, like sign. Again, let me remind both the members and the participants, the meetings are being video broadcast and video recorded today uh, to live for all time on the Comptroller's website in this case. Um, Next up is a report from the Department of Economic and Community Development uh, in regard to some fast track projects. Uh, if you're online with us, if you wouldn't mind a mute, uh, please. Um, thank you. So uh, we have with us uh, the new commissioner, Stuart McWhorter. Welcome back to the funding board. Uh, same deal, different seat. Uh, hope you remember how it goes. Paul Vandermeer, Alan Borden, Jamie. It is here. You're not coming down front, it looks like, but uh, glad to have you all. Uh, members, we have, uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five fast track projects without objection. We'll uh, have you all talk about all of them and uh, we'll take them up all at once. I will note for anybody participating that saw the initial agenda, the first fast track project was listed as TBA. We know now that that's in regard to the Highland Ventures Limited project. So with that, Commissioner, I'll start with you uh, and you are recognized. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. It's it's obviously a great to see you all on the side of, of the table, um, but it's great to be back. And I look forward to working with each of you as we uh, do great things in the state together. Uh, again, I'm Stuart McWhorter, Commissioner of the Tennessee Department of Economic Community Development. With me on my right is Al Borden, Deputy Commissioner of Business and Community and Rural Development. And on my left is Paul Vandermeer, Assistant Commissioner of Administration. Also uh, with us is Jamie Stitt, who you all know, Assistant Commissioner of Business and Workforce Development. Uh, so with that, I'm going to ask Paul to walk through the numbers uh, and, and provide you an update on where we are with the numbers. Thank you. You're recognized. Right. Our balance as of the last report was $192.5 million. Since then, we've had new appropriations of $92.5 million. $92 million is new appropriations, and the $473,000 is interest has been earned through the month of May. Um, newly deobligated funds, $249,841. Grants greater than seven hundred fifty thousand is thirteen million four hundred thousand dollars. Grants less than seven hundred fifty thousand is one point seven million. And our fast track administration has been just a little over three hundred eighty six thousand. That leaves us with an adjusted balance of two hundred sixty nine point seven million, against which we have one hundred and seventy nine point nine million of commitments leaving us an uncommitted balance of 89.8 million, which represents 66.7%. The proposed projects today are $7,050,000. That would leave us with an uncommitted fast track balance of $82,716,118.67, which represents 69.3% committed. Very good. Members, any questions? Thank you, and Commissioner, back to you. Thank you. Uh, so I will walk through the, the five uh, requests as, as uh, the first is uh, Highland Ventures. 
uh, Highland Ventures is a holding company with the top brands in the restaurant, business, video, rental, and commercial real estate industries. Today, the company employs roughly 2,500 people across the country. Uh, Highland Ventures' new Tennessee headquarters will serve as the business hub for the company's well-known brands. And we understand 15 to 20 percent of existing employees will relocate to Tennessee. Highland Ventures is committed to create 80 new jobs and to make an $8.25 million capital investment within five years. Uh, the company will have an average hourly wage of $40.98 compared to the county median average of $21.89. Uh, fast track job training assistant program funding will be used to train the net new full time employees for a total of $800,000. Second uh, project is Quanta Manufacturing Nashville. Quanta, which is headquartered in Taiwan, engages in assembly of cloud computing racks and servers. Is among the top IT companies globally and is the largest original design manufacturer of laptop computers in the world. Currently, their existing Laverne facility, Quanta assembles cloud racks and servers, employs 900 plus uh, people in Tennessee currently. Uh, they will be retrofitting a building on their campus in Rutherford County. Quanta Manufacturing has committed to create 546 net new jobs and make a 30.3 million dollar capital investment within five years. The company will have an average hourly wage of $18.82 for the new positions, which compares to the county median wage of $17.50. <coughs> Fast track economic development grant funds will help offset expenses such as building retrofit, building expansion, improvements, roof improvement, mixture improvements, and new construction for a total of $2.5 million. Second project, or excuse me, the third project is Energy Box uh, in Davidson County. Energy Box is a leading uh, IoT, internet, internet of Things automation company that helps multi site enterprise automate their operations, reduce costs, and improve sustainability. Energy Box is preparing to relocate the company's headquarters from the Northeast to Nashville. Uh, and we understand that 25% of existing employees will relocate to Tennessee. Energy Box is committed to create 250 net new jobs and make a $1.739 million capital investment within five years. The company will have an average hourly wage of $66.68 for the new positions compared to the county median wage of $41.03. Fast Track Training Assistant Program funds will be used to train the net new full time employees for a total of $1 million. The fourth project is iFixit, founded in 2003 and headquartered in St. Luis Obispo, California. iFixit is an e-commerce company that specializes in providing repair manuals, repair parts, and other guides for consumer electronic gadgets. Located in Onion Bottom Station, iFixit's new Chattanooga facility will host the company's distribution and back office operations, further connecting the California company to its East Coast customer base. They've committed to create 201 net new jobs and make a 24.25 million capital investment within five years. The company will have an average hourly wage of $24.58 for the new positions, which compares to the county median wage of $18.52. The Fast Track Economic Development Grant Fund will help offset expenses such as building retrofit, building expansion, improvement, fixture improvements, and acquisition of real property for $1 million. That was actually my first uh, jobs announcement at Chad Lewis, by the way. Uh, exciting company. Uh, the last one is Technology Advice LLC. Uh, this company is a business to business technology marketing platform that delivers marketing and data information to technology companies, helping them find their ideal clients. By expanding the tech quarters and back office operation, Technology Advice will will be able to continue delivering marketing and data information to its existing technology partners while also introducing a new line of products to its marketplace. The company is committed to create 350 net new jobs and make a $2.725 million capital investment within five years. The company will have an average hourly wage of $38.42 for the net new positions, which compares to the county medium wage of $21.03. Fast Track Job Training Assistance Program Fund will be used to train the net new full-time employees for a total of $1.75 million. That concludes the five projects. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Commissioner, let me ask you uh, just for the record in regard to these five projects, have the companies, uh, the five companies that you mentioned signed the incentive acceptance forms and fully understand the agreements? They have, yes, sir. And have the checklist been completed for every project? Yes, sir. And uh, finally, importantly, uh, do all the projects include accountability agreements, also commonly known as clawback agreements, uh, which would provide protections to the state in the event that entities couldn't hold up their end of the deal? They do. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, members, you've heard the description of the five projects. What about uh, any other questions or a motion to approve? I have a motion to approve. I'll second. Any further questions or discussions? Uh, if not, all those in favor of approval of these five projects, please respond to saying aye. 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 Uh, the projects are approved. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome back again. Uh, the next item on the agenda today, members, is consideration for approval of a resolution allocating from the debt service fund to the capital projects fund of $61,561,969.18 canceling the can't and canceling authorized bonds. Sandy Thompson will present. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the state funding board. We have a few items here on the agenda that we're going to cover that have to do with some housekeeping that we do at the end of each fiscal year. Uh, this one in particular um, is some outstanding bond authorization that is being canceled uh, in that amount of $61,561,969. Um, this resolution is effective June 31, 2020. Very good. Uh, you've heard uh, Sandy Thompson describe the item. Do we have a motion to approve? So have Second. a motion properly seconded. What about any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor of approving that cancelization, please respond to saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item uh, is approved. Next on the agenda, consideration for approval of a resolution authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds of the state of Tennessee. Sandy Thompson presenting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we do have a resolution that's contained in your packets. Um, that resolution pertains to the bond bill that was signed by the governor. And in detail, it indicates that we have a total of $583,500,000 in bonds that have been authorized for this fiscal, new fiscal year of which 83,500,000 is for highway and an additional 500 million is to provide funds for making a grant to Metro government for Davidson County construction of a dome sports stadium. This resolution um, is effective July 1, 2020. Thank you very much for describing that. And a question for the record, uh, simply authorizing this does not mean necessarily the bonds are gonna be issued right away. Uh, the timing of that, if they're issued, would be TBD to be determined. In particular, with transportation bonds, those are authorized so the contracts can be drawn. Yes. Members, uh, how about a motion uh, to, uh, we have it moved, properly seconded. Any further questions or discussions on this issue? If not, all those in favor of, of this item, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like signed. The item is approved. Next item on the agenda today is consideration for approval of a resolution allocating funds to defray a portion of the cost of highway construction projects and canceling authorized bonds. Again, Sandy Thompson to present. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this particular resolution that's in your packet authorizes the cancellation of authorized bonds that are outstanding in the amount, well, they're not outstanding, they've just been authorized in the amount of $83,500,000. Um, these bonds are canceled um, and basically matches up with the amount that's just been um, actually authorized um, in the contract. And this resolution is effective July 1, 2022. I have a motion properly seconded on this item. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. The item is approved. Next item on the agenda today is consideration for approval of a declaration of trust for other post-employment benefits for Gallatin Department of Electricity. Sandy Thompson, you're back up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in your packets, you actually have a uh, trust for the um, Gallatin Department of Electricity. It's an OPEB trust that was submitted to our office for review, and we in turn 
submitted to, submitted it to the AG's office for their review as well. Um, as you know, local government entities are authorized by law to establish OPEB trusts for the purpose of setting setting aside um, monies to prefund OPEB benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and when they do submit these trusts to our office, there's a few items that we look for. Um, one is that the trust is irrevocable. Number two, that the assets are to be extended solely for the payments that they were meant to be made for, which is benefits and cost of administering the trust. Um, all business of the trust must be transacted for the purpose of which it was received. And all assets, income, and distributions of the trust must be protected against claims of creditors. And so we have checked for all of those items in the trust. They, they do exist there. Um, and so staff does make a recommendation to approve the trust. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there by chance anyone here from Gallatin? No? Just wanted to double check. Um, Members, you've heard the description of the item. We have a motion. So moved. Have a motion properly seconded to approve the item. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor of the item as described, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. The item is approved. Next on today's agenda, the annual review of the Tennessee State Funding Board's debt management policy. Once again, Sandy Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in your packets, you have the existing debt management policy that's in place for the state funding board. Our office reviews this and we submit it to all of staff to take a look at this to see if we need to make any kinds of revisions. Um, at this time, we do not need to make any revisions. And so we are just hoping for an acknowledgement by the board that we have actually reviewed this on an annual basis. Very good. No action is required there. Members, any questions or discussion? If not, we'll move to the next item on our agenda. It is a report item. It is a report on the State of Tennessee General Obligation Commercial Paper and Bond Indebtedness. Sandy Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's um, a two-page report that's in your packet, and I'll just briefly go over this. The first page is outlining the General Obligation Debt Program as of June 30th, 2022. As you can see there, the taxable and tax exempt commercial paper outstanding, 24 million and 65 million respectively, totaling about 89 million in commercial paper outstanding. And then our GO bonds outstanding, um, $676 million taxable and $860 million in tax exempt currently outstanding for a total of $1,536,675,000 in um, the second page outlines the GEO commercial paper program. Um, as you can see there, the average daily balance for the taxable and tax exempt, 28 million and 58 million respectively. The interest rates on those um, commercial paper issuances have ranged from 0.08% to 1.12% for taxable and 0.1% to 1.5% for tax exempt. With the weighted average yields indicated there at 0.34% and then the expenses that we've incurred in fiscal year 22 are outlined in the paper interest um, that we've paid of 185,000 for the standby purchase agreement fee that we pay TCRS. And then we have the dealer services fees, issuing and paying agent fees, and rating fees. Questions on that? Thank you, Sandy. Members, again, that was a report item. Any questions or discussion? If not, that's the last item on our agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So have a motion to adjourn, properly seconded. Uh, Non-debatable, all in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much for attending the State Funding Board today. <laughs>